Hello, it's been a while. In terms of pandemic time, I'd say it's been about that long. In this update, I'm going to tell you about our courses and how we're expanding them to another platform. I'm going to tell you about the winners of the previous challenge problem and the prizes, and I'll tell you the new challenge problem. So in terms of courses, all of our physics courses up to this point have been on a platform that starts with an E. All updates will be platform agnostic now since we are on multiple platforms. So just to reach more people, uh, we're putting some of the courses on another platform that starts with a C. Maybe you can figure out what it is. It has lots of courses on it in this new era of online education. So we started with mechanics. We made uh, we broke it into three classes and made a specialization because that's what the platform that starts with a C likes. So if you want, you can take it there and join us. If you've already taken it on the platform that starts with an E, it's really exactly the same class. All I did is I, I updated some of the figures, but it's pretty much the same material. But if you just want to stop in and say hi, or you want the certificate from Coursera, it's now there. Over the holiday, we are also uh, converting um, the electricity and magnetism course. It will also be broken into three classes and turned into a specialization. And then once we finish that, I'll finally figure out what to do with my favorite class, waves and optics. It's really going to happen in 2021 seven years after its first run. Now moving on to the challenge problem. So the last challenge problem was about walking the streets of San Francisco at night and I could see the streets sparkling. And what was really interesting is far away the sparkles were slow and as they got closer to you, they got faster and faster. So how, why does that happen? That was basically the question. So I'm going to declare three winners. So the first winner that answered first was Midgic our community TA in AP Physics 1, who's for several years been a very dedicated community TA, which we appreciate. And they said that it, it's what's happening is it's like a mirror. You know, when you see a mirror in the ground and the sun hits it just right, it flashes in your eye. So there must be similar little shiny surfaces in the street. And that is correct. So that is why Midgic is winner number one. But then Lars Marcus came in and he got a little more detail with diagrams, drawing how the angle changes, you know, from the light source to whatever's reflecting on the ground to your eye has one angle far away. And as it gets closer, that angle gets uh, smaller. The change in the angle would affect how fast the uh, light rays go across the mirror to your eye. So Lars Marcus, also a winner. Uh, but I'm gonna make a third winner, and that is Tiger U8900. So, TigerU 8900 came in and said, basically those are both right. And they did the whole thing with related rates and like the chain rule and differentials, very impressive to really show mathematically that yes, as you get closer, uh, the rate does get faster. All three are correct. And now for the prize, it's a physical prize. So if Midgic, Lars Marcus, and TigerU 8900 can get me a mailing address, I am going to send them this, Fizierge Hand Soap. That's right. Very uh, luxurious item here, the Fizierge hand soap. Only three in the world exist, and you will have one of them if you can get me a mailing address. Um, it's supposed to be a hand soap, and when I got it, it's kind of big, more like a body soap. And I don't really want to think about that, so let's just, let's just call it a hand soap. Please only use the Fizierge soap as a hand soap. So now that you all are very jealous that you want your own Fizierge hand soap or equivalent prize, let's talk about the next uh, challenge problem. Okay, so this time I was rafting in um, the Grand Canyon. One well, of these things where you ride the big raft. I mean, it's got a motor. I wasn't rowing. I mean, let's get real here. It was with a guide and several families. But you go through these really big rapids and you barely hold on. And So I had a camera. It was actually a, an iPhone in a, in a plastic slot. If I wasn't wearing the GoPro, I mean, you know kids were there. But I had this thing around my neck and I could get pretty good slow-mo video of the rapids. And I noticed that when it splashed, you saw lots of little drops flying through the air. And in slow-mo, it looks kind of cool. And these drops fly through the air. And I noticed on the video that they're kind of like shaking. It looks like they're oscillating. So I got to thinking, if this spherical drop is oscillating, like widening and, you know, contracting and expanding, you know, contracting on one axis, expanding on the other, and then switching, you know, because it has to conserve its volume because it's an incompressible fluid. That's an interesting oscillation. So when you look at that video, the problem is, can you use the rate of that oscillation to calculate or estimate the surface tension of water? I decided that it's possible and I did it and I got 
pretty close to the actual value without a factor of two or three. So there's a way to get from the oscillations of a sphere of fluid to the surface tension of water. This is a pretty hard one. So this is sort of a, if you've taken the 201 waves in optics and really understand why oscillations occur and think about that, you might be able to do it. Um, one thing about it though, is when you watch the video, uh, you'll also say, well, those, those drops might be rotating. And I agree, it's hard to tell if it's like a wide drop rotating or if it's one doing oscillating like this. Um, so I just, I just assumed it was oscillating like this and I got the rate and I got about the right answer. So let's just assume they're really doing this. You can watch the video and decide which ones you think are rotating and which ones you think are doing this oscillation. That's up to you. But in the end, it's not so much about measuring that rate and confirming that's the motion. It's about getting from that motion and that rate to the surface tension of water. See what you can do with that. And I will see y'all next time.